Lights down, screen up, it's time to dive in deep Chat GPT plays where our stories don't sleep Today we're walking through memories and doors And tell me why exploring secrets and shores Alright there, it's your old mate Yorkie here Welcoming you back to Chat GPT plays Tell Me Why You'll notice that we slowed down the speed a little bit Because uh, it's overwhelming to try and do everything I do in one day including three to four, sometimes more hours to get a Tell Me Why episode or a ChatGPT episode done. So it'll be every two to three days. Um, anyway, ChatGPT, before we step in, why don't you remind us very briefly of the story so far? Hello, Yorkie. Let's dive into a quick recap of Tell Me Why, Tyler and Alice and Ronan, twins, who have been separated for 10 years, reunite in their childhood home in Delos Crossing, Alaska to prepare it for sale. Their reunion is not just about tidying up the house, but also confronting their painful past, which includes the night their mother, Mary Ann, died under traumatic circumstances, Tyler defending himself against her during a confrontation. As they sort through the house, they encounter various objects that trigger shared supernatural memories, revealing more about their childhood and their mother's complex and often troubling behavior. These memories are helping them piece together the full story of what happened that night and understand the difficult dynamics of their family. The twins have just managed to unlock Marianne's room by solving a riddle based on a story from their childhood. The Book of Goblins, which is filled with stories Marianne wrote, symbolizing different aspects of their lives. They are now poised to explore Marianne's room, potentially uncovering more about her and the secrets she kept. That's where we are now. Ready to continue unraveling the mysteries of the Ronan family history. Let's get back into it. Whatever's going on, they won't let me in. Oh, they used to tell me everything, but they shut me out, Tessa. They've shut me out. I've had so much on my plate lately, and... And... They're convinced I'm the enemy, and I don't know why! I need them. I need my goblins. I remember now. We heard her crying. We listened through the door. Seeing her like this, as if she's still here, it's... It really sucks. She was really coming apart those last few months, wasn't she? She always had to have a picture of us close by. Why this picture, though? I mean, do you see the expression on our faces? Oh. This explains a lot. They're mostly full. She was too stubborn to take medication. It's here! I knew it. I fucking knew it! Do you think she read it? Of course! She was nosy as hell.
Tyler. <laughs> Tyler. What? Look. What? Where did you find that? It was on her desk with her papers. Seriously? Are you fucking kidding me? Look, we gotta be really careful not to overthink this. But it doesn't make any sense. She, she was mad, right? She was mad at I, I cut my hair. She attacked me because I cut my hair. She was mad and she attacked you. We both saw it. Then what is this shit? I don't know. I don't know. Tyler, come here. She can't do this to me. Not now. When I f finally made sense of a few things. Well, that was your first mistake. Thinking the world made any kind of sense. Ten years in the grave, and she's still finding new ways to piss us off. Yeah. I think I need some air. Are you really, really sure? I am. Do it. Okay. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Whoa. Is it all gone? Yeah. It, it looks amazing. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to show mom. She's been so sad lately. More than sad. She's been scary. Yeah, but not tonight though. It was almost like a party. <gasps> Thank you, Allison. You don't have to thank me. You're my sister. I feel more like, like your brother. Brother, sister, we look out for each other. But I'm pretty sure I just gave you a really bad haircut. <laughs> <laughs>
This is wrong. This is all wrong. Wait! Stop! Glad we found your diary. Me too. I guess she was trying to figure out where you were at. Yeah, well, she should have asked. I wasn't some goddamn research project, I was her child. About the book. Raising your transgender child? Do you even know how rare these books were in 2005? Was she trying to figure out how to support me? Maybe. Which, she wasn't trying. She never... <sighs> it doesn't make sense, I know. You cutting your hair was what set her off, right? Allison, she read my diary. She already knew. It wasn't my hair. And if we were wrong about that, fuck. You think she read it. It's possible she never even opened the diary and that things are exactly like we always thought they were. But if she did and they aren't... God, Tyler. Sure. I mean, we could have been wrong. But what good does it do to ask the question now? You mean other than not having to live with the thought that my mom tried to kill me for being me? Tyler, I know you want there to be something to find. Something that'll make it all make sense. But she was unhinged. So that's it then. She was crazy. Nothing else to say. I think we'd be better off if we tried to move on. Why don't we talk to a few people who knew her? See if that book makes any sense to them. People don't want to talk about Marianne. They pretend like that night never happened. Based on the complexities revealed in the storyline so far, and the contextual background of early 2000s social issues regarding transgenderism, Marianne's behavior and her possession of both the book, Raising Your Transgender Child, and the booklet for the Virtue Seekers Youth Camp, presented by the Alliance for Traditional Families, could suggest a profound internal conflict. Internal conflict and contradictions, Marianne's actions and possessions indicate she might have been torn between her internal beliefs and the external pressures or norms of society at that time. The presence of a supportive book suggests she might have been attempting to understand and possibly accept Tyler's identity. However, her actions, especially the violent ones, and the presence of a booklet from a conservative group, could suggest she was also influenced by or grappling with conservative views that did not support transgender rights or identities. Societal pressure During the early 2000s, societal acceptance of transgender individuals was far less than it is today, often filled with misinformation and prejudice. Marianne's struggle might reflect the broader societal conflict, influencing her reactions and acceptance levels. Her fear and the possible stigma of having a transgender child could have driven her to seek out resources like the book. Even as she considered more traditional and conservative approaches like the youth camp, personal struggles, Marianne's mental health issues, hinted at through her behaviors, and the medications found, might have compounded her ability to fully comprehend or accept Tyler's identity. Her fluctuating mental state could have affected her clarity and consistency in dealing with Tyler's revelations. Given these elements, Marianne's contradictory actions, owning a supportive book while simultaneously not accepting her child's identity, could be seen as a representation of her confusion, fear, and the conflicting information and norms she was exposed to. To explore further or perhaps find more concrete answers, maybe Tessa has answers, this response opens the pathway to explore more about Marianne's influences and the community's perspectives during that time. Tessa, as someone possibly close to Marianne, might provide insights into her thought processes and the external influences that shaped her actions. This could offer a broader understanding of the social context and personal dilemmas Marianne faced, shedding light on the complexities of her acceptance and resistance. What about Tessa? She was Marianne's closest friend. 
Let's ask her about it. Sure. But I'll warn you, she's particularly touchy about this subject. Well, maybe she'll talk to me. I was always her favorite. Operative word was. But we need to go by the store anyway to get a few things for the repairs. Great. Two seagulls, one stale hunk of bread. I'm not sure I like that analogy. Listen, I know you don't want to keep talking about this. But you're obviously not going to be satisfied until we do. So let's talk. I'd go with, we have a plan. This response keeps the conversation focused on moving forward with their objectives, both in terms of resolving the emotional issues surrounding their mother and handling the practical aspects of fixing up the house for sale. It also subtly acknowledges Allison's reluctance while still pushing for the need to address these unresolved issues, showing Tyler's determination to find closure or answers. This approach can help maintain a balance between respecting Allison's feelings and continuing the pursuit of understanding their past. So, we have a plan? Yep. We ask around about Marianne, but we also stick to our repair schedule. Sounds good to me. Molly's Diary. It's been a long time since I heard that name. Was I the only one who ever called you that? Actually, no. I used it at Fireweed for a while, until I settled on Tyler. Most people were pretty chill about the switch. Not everyone, though. What do you mean? I had a mentee who refused to call me Tyler. He didn't want my help. He didn't want anyone's help. I'm sorry. I like the name Tyler, by the way. Thanks. I think I'd like to end up somewhere like this, just not here. Somewhere with more trees than people? Exactly. Just go into it with a little more of a plan than Marianne did. I'd go with, I could be a ranger. This response reflects Tyler's aspirations and connects back to his, earlier mentions of possibly working in Denali. It represents a forward-looking statement that ties into his love for nature and desire for a future where he can find peace and a sense of belonging. Additionally, it subtly shifts the focus from Marianne's failed plans to Tyler's own vision for his life, providing a positive direction for the conversation and highlighting his personal growth and independence. Already working on it. With my degree, it'll be easy to get a job as a ranger. After you spend a little time in Juno? Uh, still a maybe on that one. At least the glacier's still there. You have to wonder just what kind of stories it could tell. You know, if it had a mouth. I'd go with, remember the ice cave. This response not only taps into nostalgia, invoking a shared memory that might be comforting or significant to both Tyler and Allison, but it also subtly aligns with the current topic of glaciers and the stories they could tell. It offers an opportunity to deepen the conversation about their past experiences, their connection to the natural world, and how those experiences have shaped them. This could lead to a reflective, possibly healing dialogue between the siblings. Remember the ice cave? The old bear's den? That's the one. It would have made a perfect secret base if we'd ever been able to find it again. You know I actually went looking for it a few years ago. Really? No way. So? We found it, but the entrance had collapsed. Ah, bummer. If you squint, you can almost forget Delos Crossing's only a few miles away. I'm sure Marianne tried to. Can't blame her. We're headed there for supplies later. Are you ready for that? Yeah, but I was really enjoying a day without assholes. Just a little longer, and every day will be asshole free. That might be asking a lot. Not a bad view, right? I forgot how beautiful it is. I'd go with. We lived in our own world. This response enhances the sense of nostalgia and connection between Tyler and Allison, reflecting on, 
how their imaginative play as children help them create a personal sanctuary away from their troubles. It reinforces their bond and the importance of their shared memories, especially in the context of revisiting places laden with emotional significance. This can deepen their emotional dialogue and highlight the protective bubble they had created for themselves against the challenges of their upbringing. We were in our own world most of the time. The lake wasn't just a lake. It was Moon Hag's lair, and the mountain was an ice troll. True. Plus, you get used to anything if you see it every day. Not always. Nice ring. Get from your boyfriend? Come on. I told you I'm not with anyone right now. Don't rub it in. Why does it look familiar? It was a gift from Eddie. He had them both made at the same time. Both? Oh, wait. Yeah. This ring is supposed to be linked to the one Eddie had made for you. You know, twins rings. Something like that. Oh, um... That's a little weird, but also kind of cool. I've still got it. Right here in my pocket. Uh, nice try. But not today. Maybe another time, though. Well, guess we better get going. Here, I thought you'd never tear yourself away. Yeah, sorry. Views like this, I just tend to get lost in them. Go ahead, I'll catch up. I need to respond to a message. Uh huh. My sister, the social butterfly. Seems we got a trespasser. Uh, what the fuck? You got five seconds to talk me into defending my property. Your property? Five. Four. I'm Tyler. No know any Tylers. Three. Two. Sam! Ellie? What are you doing out here, girl? This is our house. Was I talking to you? Sam, put the gun down. This is Tyler. My brother. Are you... Brother? Oh, shit. Huh. I guess I heard about all that, but I never... <laughs> Damn, <laughs> you look like a real man. So do you, Sam. You know what I mean. I just didn't know they could make a woman look so much like a man. I'd go with. I am a man. This response straightforwardly affirms Tyler's gender identity. Addressing Sam's misconceptions directly and educating him in a clear manner. It's an opportunity for Tyler to assert himself and set the terms of how he is perceived and addressed, which is crucial in interactions that challenge his identity. This response also helps in establishing boundaries and correcting any disrespectful or ignorant remarks about transgender individuals. Not a woman who looks like a man, Sam. A man. A real man, just like you. Oh, shit. Guess I'm the asshole again. You gotta excuse us, old guys. I really don't. Oh, come on. You kids keep changing the rules. You can't expect us to keep up. Just respect the people are who they say they are. It's not hard. No, it ain't hard, but it just takes some getting used to. We'll get used to it, because we aren't going anywhere. So, what are you doing here exactly? Oh, well, I, uh, I've been kind of keeping an eye on this place for you, you know? It's like patching the roof, checking the pipes, and all that stuff. Thank you, Sam. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, uh, that's no big deal. I just... You know, your mama, she was, uh, she was a special lady. She deserved much better than, you know, uh, what you got. Didn't you used to help Mary Ann with repairs and building projects? Oh, yeah. Yeah, seeing as your mama never had a man around, I just you know, took it on myself to help her keep this place standing. How antiquated of you. Thanks. I uh, guess you two are still aiming to sell the place? That's the plan. Which, by the way, we need your keys. 
since apparently you went and changed the locks? Oh yeah, absolutely. But, uh, selling your mother's house? Are you sure? Bad or good? It's all you've got left of her. I'd go with a few bad memories too. This response acknowledges the complexity of their relationship with Marianne and the house, without dismissing Sam's involvement or efforts outright. It adds a touch of realism to the conversation, pointing out that the house represents more than just physical memories. It also holds emotional weight, some of which are painful. This choice allows for a more nuanced dialogue, potentially leading to a deeper understanding or reflection from Sam about the situation without escalating into confrontation. Not all. I'm sure the gun she tried to kill us with is still somewhere in there. Tyler! What? What Tyler means is, a fresh start is what we both need. Of course. Uh, this place has got to be full of all kinds of bad memories. But maybe some good ones, too? I'd go with, we should go. This response prioritizes removing both yourself and Allison from a potentially uncomfortable or escalating situation, especially considering the tension in the previous confrontation with Sam. It's a strategic choice that can help defuse the situation, allowing both siblings to regroup and discuss how they want to handle Sam's presence and the conversation about their mother's house without further conflict. We should get going. That's all you think we'll get out of him? I'd go with, I have more questions. This response indicates that despite the tension and discomfort, there might still be valuable information to glean from Sam that could aid in understanding their mother's actions and the history of the house. It shows a willingness to endure a bit of discomfort to possibly uncover more about their past, reflecting Tyler's determination to piece together the full story. I guess I could ask him a few more questions. Okay. I'd go with, were you close to her? This question can potentially open up more personal and detailed insights about Marion from Sam's perspective. Understanding their relationship might provide context to his actions, such as why he felt compelled to look after the house, and could reveal more about Marion's life and state of mind that the twins are not aware of. This could be crucial for piecing together missing parts of their family history. How well did you know her? Not as well as I thought. When I heard what happened that night, well... I figured people were bullshitting me. It really surprised you, didn't it? Much as anything ever has. Other folks say they saw it coming. <sighs> Not me. Did you help with her door? Her door? The puzzle on her bedroom door. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah you two kept sneaking in, giving her no privacy, huh? You ever solve it? Yep. Better late than never, I guess. Uh, never solved it myself. I mean, not that I wanted to. I, I, uh, uh, so, uh, guess you know all your mama's secrets now, huh? Well, she may have one or two left. I'd go with, we should leave. This response allows you and Allison to gracefully exit the conversation if it becomes unproductive or uncomfortable, especially given the emotional intensity and Sam's uncertain state. It shows consideration for both, your and Allison's well-being, prioritizing a calm and thoughtful approach to handling the sensitive topics being discussed. This choice can also help maintain a respectful distance, and give both of you time to process the information received without further complicating interactions. We should get going. 
That's all you think we'll get out of him? He's too wasted to be of any more help. I'll tell him to get a move on then. Well, we've got a supply run to make, and Uncle Eddie's expecting a visit, so... Oh, right. Yeah, of course. Uh, get going, you two. Um, Sam? We all gotta get going. Oh. Uh, of course. Of course, yeah, I got lots to do myself. I, lots of to-dos on old Sam's list. Uh, and you don't want to keep Brown waiting, you know? <laughs> Thanks for looking out for this place. Happy to do it. I... Uh, don't hesitate to reach out if you need anything. Anything at all. You hear? Sam? Huh? Uh, Sam? Huh? The keys? Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah, they're, they're yours. I, uh... uh mm. This place, it meant a lot to your mother. It almost felt like it was a part of her, and it's like some part of her is alive here still. Hopefully the house doesn't turn out to be a murderous psycho that tries to kill us in our sleep, huh? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, take care of yourself, uh, both of you. Hey, so, we really do have a lot to do. Okay, go on. I'll be right behind you. This episode delved deeply into the emotional and complex relationships between the characters, particularly highlighting Sam's reactions and the twins' interactions with him. Sam's initial response to Tyler's transgender identity was awkward and somewhat ignorant, which is reflective of real-world reactions from those who may not be familiar or comfortable with transgender topics. His attempt to correct himself after using insensitive language shows a glimmer of self-awareness, though it's clear he struggles with fully understanding and accepting Tyler's identity. Sam's connection to Marion added another layer of depth to the episode. His emotional attachment to her and the house reveals a bond that was not only personal but also filled with nostalgia and regret. His comments about the house being a part of Marianne and how a part of her still feels alive in it resonate with a sense of unresolved grief and attachment to the past. Tyler and Allison's handling of the situation with Sam was particularly telling of their growth throughout the series. Tyler's firm but polite correction of Sam's misgendering highlighted his growing confidence in asserting his identity. Meanwhile, Allison acted as a mediator, skillfully managing to ease tensions and guide the conversation, which underscores her role as a supportive sister and her understanding of the delicate nature of their interactions with people from their past. Overall, the episode skillfully navigated these sensitive dynamics, showing the impact of past relationships on the present and setting the stage for further emotional developments in the series. It was a poignant exploration of how the twins manage their ties with the community and continue to confront and understand their past. All right, then. All that remains now is to say goodnight to the viewers. So it's goodnight from me. And it's goodnight from him. Good night. In Delos Crossing, where whispers grow, two twins uncover tales from the shadows. A house full of secrets, walls that speak Of a past so haunting truth we see Tell me why, why These memories hide behind closed eyes Tell me why, why Every echo forms another tie In a game of life and mystery Your key and die 
Allison and Tyler Bound by fate Confronting a past they didn't create Through visions and choices Their stories unwind In a dance of destiny What will they find? Old rooms whisper with the voice of the past Crafty goblin shadows they cast Each memory a puzzle, each clue a key On your geese channel, what will we see? Tell me why, why These memories hide behind closed eyes Tell me why, why Every echo forms another time to behold Through the eyes of the twins as secrets unfold On chat GPT plays where adventures never end and tell me why We're past and present 